Hello, it's Becca, and welcome to a calming afternoon of cozy pie making here at a little farmhouse on the northern plains of Iowa. Today, I thought I'd share two easy and delicious pie recipes that were cultivated through hard times during the Great Depression era. I'll be making a classic old-time vinegar pie, as well as a delightful Amish shoe fly pie. So as always, I'm so glad you're here with me today and have stopped by for a visit here at our home, the Carriage House. So I'm going to start by making my pie crust. It's really easy to make. There's only four ingredients in this flour, butter, salt, and water. And during this time period, as you know, ingredients were stretched very thin, so a little had to go a long way. So I'm going to start making my dough, and I will leave these recipes down below. major tip I've learned over the years when making a pie crust, apart from the flour, you want your ingredients very cold. So I grate frozen butter and use ice cold water and then incorporate everything until the butter looks like the size of peas.
So now that the vinegar pie has been made and placed in the oven, I'm going to start making the shoe fly pie. And these pies are so delicious, by the way, especially the vinegar pie. I know it sounds funny, but you can almost taste the oldness or just that deep connection with the past and the era. There's this unique but simple taste to the pie. It's hard to explain, but I would definitely recommend making it. But the shoe fly pie is a delightful gooey pie that has layers of crumbly mixture of sugar and spices, and it's not shoe fly pie unless you use the molasses. But shoe fly pie actually comes to us from Amish country in Pennsylvania, and legend has it that small pools of molasses would typically form on top of the cake while it's cooling, making it an appealing spot for a fly to land. Thus, shoe fly pie. <laughs>